You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer who murdered George Floyd, was charged today with a new, more serious count of second-degree murder. The three other officers, Thomas Lane and J. Alexander King, King who helped restrain Floyd, and Tu Thao, who stood near the others while were charged with aiding and abetting second-degree murder. Attorney General Keith Ellison of Minnesota announced the charges. The evidence, together with the BCA, and we have something to announce today. Before I announce it, I want to say thank you for the patience of the people who they've shown me and our entire team in pursuit of justice. And I'm here uh, to make these announcements right now. First, today, <clears throat> I filed an amended complaint that charges, that charges former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin with murder in the second degree for the death of George Floyd. I believe the evidence available to us now supports the stronger charge of second-degree murder. We've consulted with each other, and we agree. Second, today, arrest warrants were issued for former Minneapolis police officers uh, J.A. King, Thomas Lane, and Tu Tao. Finally, I'd like to announce that today, Hennepin County Attorney Michael Freeman and I uh, uh, filed a complaint that charges uh, police officer King, Lane, and Tao with aiding and abetting murder in the second degree of felony offense. I strongly believe that these developments are in the interest of justice for Mr. Floyd, his family, our community, and our state. Uh, of course, a lot of things happening today, a lot of news, a lot of things uh, popping off. Let's go right to our panel, A. Scott Bolden, former chair, National Bar Association Political Action Committee, Robert Patillo, Executive Director, Rainbow Push Coalition, Peach Tree Street Project, Mustafa Santiago Ali, uh, former senior advisor, environmental justice, EPA. Scott, I'll start with you. Keith Ellison stands there. He's the Attorney General of Minnesota, makes those charges. The DA of Hennepin County is standing right next to him, the same DA who had a news conference last week who basically uh, did not have the guts to charge him on Thursday and then, of course, wait till the next day. And then only you charge one guy, not the other three. And so, wow, a week later, miraculous. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know there's some politics to this, without a doubt. Part of the politics was negotiating what the local DA could live with, rightfully or wrongfully. And Keith's got to play his politics as the attorney general, but Keith's taking control because he's going to be prosecuting these cases. The other reason we know that is because murder two is just murder or felony assault without uh, premeditation. Murder two is fair. It's not murder one. But then what's interesting is, let's talk about the negotiation. Uh, Keith, for now, the attorney general, kept in um, uh, murder three, as well as the manslaughter two, which are lesser included that normally would not you would not put in the charging document because they completely undermine the murder two charge or the murder three. Either it was purposeful, intentional, or was it? And manslaughter and even murder three suggest that perhaps there may have been some extenuating circumstances. Look for those other charges to go away. Aiding and abetting, uh, each of those officers can still get up to 40 years. And so we're getting close to this. It, it'll be interesting what's left in those charging documents once we get to court or to a grand jury if they go to a grand jury. Uh, Robert, your assessment of the announcement today of these charges? Well, I think we talked about this last week when they initially, mm -hmm. um, well, when they initially said that they uh, were doing murder three, that was a ridiculous charge because we have videotape of what took place. And since that time, we've seen additional video come out, one showing that um, what was stated in the initial charging documents was untrue when they said that Mr. Uh, Floyd refused to get into the vehicle. We saw actual video of him being assaulted in the vehicle. Um, the initial medical examiner's report was contradicted by the independent um, autopsy, which stated that asphyxiation was the cause of death and also that the other two officers being on his chest and uh, and body cavity 
uh, let uh, contributed to the uh, loss loss of consciousness and also ultimately the loss of his life. Um, further, we uh, saw that after they took his pulse and saw that and saw that he was either near death or dead, that knee remained on his throat for an additional mm-hmm. three to four minutes thereafter. So, uh, for the state. Uh, or for the police officers, they are lucky that they do not have a first degree murder charge. Because remember, the intent to commit murder, the premeditation does not have to be one of these crazy Dexter plots, not this silence of the lamb type killing. Intent and premeditation can be formed in an instant. And I would argue uh, that the instant they was, took his pulse and saw that he was dead, that when that knee remained on his throat, that was clear premeditation and intent to kill that individual. I do think the murder two charge is a fair charge, as long as they do not try to go back and retroactively reduce it down, uh, t- uh, have a plea agreement down to the unintentional murder. Also, interestingly, yeah. from the beginning of this case was the fact that the other officers refused and took their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. And normally, if you're innocent, you say, I want to cooperate with the state and uh, assist in this prosecution to clear my name in all ways possible. When you have four people say that we are all taking the Fifth and not going to testify, that's what you get in gang cases. That's what you get in mafia cases. This is a, a, a systemic issue within police departments across the country where they believe that this thin blue line is more important than any constitutional vow that is being taken. We're seeing this right now in Atlanta, where after six officers were fired for the assault on the two college students, now other officers from other jurisdictions are refusing to come to Atlanta to assist in policing uh, as a show of solidarity with those officers. Uh, We saw the police chief come out today and say that this was a political firing of those officers. So we have to break down this police culture that puts the people in those uniforms above the Constitution and above the people of this country. One second. Who said it was a, today it was a political firing of those officers? The police chief in Atlanta. The same people agreed with the mayor on Saturday? Yes, because that was when the two officers were charged criminally. The, uh, the firing of the additional officers, she feels, was because of political pressure put on by, uh, by protest. This is, Mr. Mustafa, this is, this is the fundamental problem right here. This is the fundamental problem I have with these police departments. Yesterday, we had the district attorney, Paul Howard, on. He told us that the officer that pulled the weapon out against those two students was another officer asked asked him afterwards, why did y'all do this? And he said, because they pulled guns out on us. Students had no guns. Is that these cops lie. They make stuff up to cover stuff up. And only because we had the body cameras going in Atlanta, they saw exactly what happened. The case out of Minneapolis, same thing. The reason people are angry, Mustafa, at police departments is because the public doesn't feel that there is justice. That cops are allowed to lie, make stuff up, uh, tell what happened several days later, as opposed to justice and fairness. You know, they led earlier when James Baldwin said to be black in America and to be relatively conscious means to be, you know, in a rage all the time. The rage comes from this blue wall of silence. The rage comes from knowing that justice hardly ever comes to our community, whether it is in from the police, uh, if it's from our, you know, elected officials, from a number of the folks who are supposed to be protecting our communities. And that's the reason why people are, are, are marching. That's the reason why people are fighting so hard is because we know we have to change the system, the systemic racism, you know, the systemic actions by police continually is what is bringing up this rage that we feel. But we also are going to focus that rage uh, into real tangible types of changes. And that's why You know, when uh, folks share with uh, President Obama, you know, the eight steps that folks are looking for, people are translating that anger. They're translating it into actual steps that can actually help to protect our communities and to get real accountability in the process. All right, folks, back to our roadblock unfiltered video in just one moment. These amazing headphones here, black owned company, of course. We had her on the show talking about it. Y'all, these are 360 degree 4D headphones. Gamers love them, uh, but you can also talk. They're Bluetooth. 
The sound is amazing. I'm telling y'all, I, I got a lot of headphones. I really love these headphones. Uh, and so for our, for our viewers, and let me tell y'all something. Y'all have been amazing supporting this black-owned company. It's been great. Here's the code. If y'all want to buy these headphones or you want to buy the virtual reality headset uh, that they have on sale, pull a code up, please. Use this code. RMVIP2020. RMVIP2020. Go to seek.com. C-E-E-K.com. See, y'all, we support black-owned businesses here. That's what we do. (laughs) 